Good Thursday afternoon, everybody. It's Nancy from The Colorful Cookie. We have several new members, so if you're watching, welcome. If this is your first live, I am live in the Facebook group for Colorful Cookie Club members. I'm also live on YouTube today because the Colorful Cookie Club is open for enrollment until April 3rd, and then we won't be open for enrollment again until later on in the year. Hi, Donna. Um, I am going to be doing a tutorial today in Cricut Design Space. It is a graduation tutorial since that is just around the corner, and graduation is always a really busy time for cookie decorators. I do have my a couple of my printers running in the background. I'm hoping you can't hear that. Uh, and it, if it is, it's not distracting. Um, I'm printing cookie cutters for, I, I gave away five sets of cookie cutters, all the cookie cutters from all the instructors during Cookie-a-thon. The Colorful Cookie, the Colorful Cookie Club, Procreate, and Cookie-a-thon is, I consider that my sponsorship, so I give away prizes too. And I'm giving away five sets of cutters, and there's 60, about 60 cutters. So I've been printing a lot, and I've got to get those prizes mailed out next week. So if you are a current club member, you can let your friends know that the club is open. It's the colorfulcookie.com slash club. And I did put it in the comments of this live as well. Okay, good. Thank you. I was wondering if they were too noisy. They're noisy to me, but maybe my uh, mic isn't picking them up like I thought it would. Uh, if you are wanting to join the club, you can go to the colorfulcookie.com slash club. And you can click join now. It's $19.99 a month or it is $199 a year. I teach people how to design cookie stencils using Silhouette Studio software, Cricut Design Space software. Um, we also use Procreate on the iPad. I teach uh, some Canva tutorials. We uh, learn how to make royal icing transfer templates, toppers, tags, backers. Um, I teach just a little bit of everything that has to do with stencils and cookie cutters. I also teach cookie cutter design using Fusion 360, Cookie CAD, uh, lots of fun things. Uh, if, when you're a cookie decorator, doing those fun things helps you customize your cookies. We also have many members who have purchased the direct to food printers like Big Blue or the Blue Line and then Eddy printers. And I also teach how to create PNG files, JPEG files, SVG files, STL files. So you name it, I pretty much teach it. All right, so we need to get started. I want to welcome everybody if you're just coming in. If you are a current club member, now, so during our Thursday Live, I go live every Thursday. I do um, help people in the club if they've asked specific questions by email or posted in the group. And I usually talk for a minute and then ask if anybody has any design questions. And I can see we have a few members here watching. I haven't seen any posts asking any design questions unless any of you have any right off the bat. Um, I have seen a question about some projectors. People, we do in the club, we do have questions about other things um, besides stencils and cutters. We try to keep it focused on that and our software, but I haven't seen any new design questions in the last couple of days. What I like to do is if someone is working on a project and they are struggling and don't quite know how to make it, I will either do a little tutorial to show them how to make their design into a stencil or a cutter. I will then send the file to them so that they don't have to stress about making it and then they can learn from the video I've made for next time. So I try to help club members in that way. All right, I'm just gonna go straight to Design Space and I am going to do this graduation tutorial for you. We have um, a couple of different, I have a diploma in here. I have a graduation image that we're going to make into a silk screen stencil. 
I normally show either how, well, both, how to make a silk screen and how to bridge the letters for a, what I call a traditional stencil, which is cut out of the, the mylar uh, or the food safe graphics material, or if you use the polyester uh, stencil material. I have this set up on my Cricut right now. I have a cameo over here behind me. So I do use both and I teach both. All right, so let's go straight into design space here. Oops, that's not design space. That's me. The, while I'm here, I might as well show you though. Um, oh, there it is. Let's go back. So if you're interested in joining the Colorful Cookie Club, this is what the website looks like. And you can click here to join now. You can just read information and see what is offered in the club. So in case you're interested in that, it's the colorfulcookie.com slash club. I thought, I've got Cookie Cat open. I thought if we had time, I would show you uh, Cookie Cat today too. It depends on, on how much time we have. So let me pull Cricut back up. So you can see here, I have some images that I just basically did a search in Design Space. And when you open it up, you will come to your, let me click save in case I haven't. Nope, I have, okay. You will open up to the home page, And basically all I did was I came in here and I typed in graduation. And I get these images up here. Now you'll see lots of other projects or my projects from the past here. And I clicked view all because I wanted to see all the graduation images and I just started scrolling through until I found some that I like. Now you can type in graduation cap, uh, diploma, you can type in all kinds of things here. And I actually did bookmark this one to show you because it was way down the list and I wanted to show you if you're interested in this one. Anytime you see these images and they have this colored, this off colored text, let me go back here. Um, let me click on view all again. I want to, I don't want to just see my bookmarks. I want to view everything. So anytime you're coming through these images and you see this green A here at the top, those are Cricut Access images. Those are included in your Cricut Access subscription. If you don't have that, it'll tell you down here what you have to pay before it will let you cut this project. So as I'm scrolling through here, I was looking, I'm seeing lots of 2023 and I can't change this one to 24. I already know that. So down here, I was looking at these because anytime you see this blue and gray colored text, that is editable text. You can edit this. So I knew I could change these to 2024. And so the ones that I chose had editable text so that I could change it. Like this one, you can edit this text. If you're looking at this one, see all that, that's black. You cannot edit this to say 2024. So I'm going to click right back up here to go to Canvas. And you can see that I did make a change here already. This text was blue and I could edit it. Uh, and I'm, I need to pull one back in here so I can show you how I edited this one. This I thought would be a good silk screen stencil. It's got that nice um, bouncy lettering, which is popular. And, and I just like this design. I chose, there were lots of different types of gowns to choose from. And if you have a 3D printer, you can print your own cookie cutters using the designs in Design Space. Now, a lot of people say, well, I can't export out of Design Space. You cannot export any image out of Design Space but there is a workaround for that. And I only suggest doing that if you have the Cricut Access subscription because you're paying to use these designs if you have that subscription and you can make yourself a cookie cutter that matches your stencil. So you'll see some other things down here where I was working on making some bridges. This one is for a traditional stencil where I've actually added the bridges in that would be cut out of the mylar or polyester or graphic speed safe materials. This one you see, and when I say bridges, I mean, let me zoom in here. When we make a traditional stencil is what I like to call it. We add these bridges because they're, they're like 
they're like fingers that they're actually stencil material that holds that graduation word inside of the square stencil frame or the square stencil. You've got to have something to hold it in. So these are little connectors that keep it connected to the square stencil. So I'm going to come back up here and see this one does not have any bridges. This we can use heat transfer vinyl to make a silk screen and we don't have to add the bridges in that case. Now there's no time I mean, it would take a long time for me to explain every single part of that silkscreen process to you today, assembling it and making it. I won't be doing that, but I will show you how to make a silkscreen in the design software. I do cover all of that extensively in the Colorful Cookie Club, though. Now, when I zoomed in, I clicked this plus sign down here. If I want to go back to 100%, I can just click on the number down here in the lower left-hand corner and it will uh, go back to 100%. All right, so I'm working on a Mac, and when I talk about the uh, keyboard shortcuts and things, I usually will tell you the shortcut for a PC as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is bring this design in again and show you how I edited this text. So let's go back to images and um, I'm going to go to, let me see if I can find my stuff, bookmarked. Um, oh, that's my projects. No, images. I want my bookmark images. Okay, so this one right here, I bookmarked. I'm going to click Add to Canvas. And that is going to add it to my canvas. These are tabs up here. I'm going to click my Canvas tab again. Uh, 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 get out of there. Oh, okay, that's not what I want. Um, here, let's go home. <laughs> here, come on. Well, I want to get rid of that. I've got too many windows open here that are covering my things. Okay, haha. <laughs> well, good grief. Click off of images. There we go. So, I was clicked on images. Design Space has updated several times over the last year or so, and they've changed a lot of things. In fact, there's an update right now, and I have not updated. They're giving you the option now to update or not. And so it asked me in my notification, it says it's ready to be installed. Well, previously, even a, a week or two ago, it did not give you the option to install. It just did it automatically, and so now they're asking me if I want to install. And you do want to install the most recent update. So here is this image <coughs> that I brought in just now. I'm going to scoot these over. I tend to get a lot of, of elements, designs, in my workspace. And it'll get cluttered up here, but I try to move things around so that it's not too cluttered for you to see what I'm doing. All right, so here's what we're working on. I need to change this text to 2024. If you look over here, this green tells me that I have this element or this design selected. If I click this toggle, then you can see I have the text and then I have this this uh, grad, the cap and the line underneath and I still have another toggle. So. I can expand that and I see all of these are different elements of this design. There's the word grad, the cap, the little line underneath, and the dot. See, the line, the dot, the word grad, and the cap. But I want to change this text. So I'm going to click on it over here to select it. And then I'm going to double click. And see how that turns that blue color? I'm going to click at the end here, press delete, and then four. And so I have the text 2024. Now you might notice that my text looks different here because I wanted to change it. So I double clicked on it and you don't even have to double click. You can just click on it once and it's hello, babe. And I thought, well, I want to try a different font. I don't love that one. So I started going through here, clicking on these, changing this, and I can see what it looks like as I'm clicking through. And I'm just looking at Cricut fonts right now. And I wanted to choose something different. So if you're wondering, that is how I changed the font. 
So now it says, oh, and I did pick this one. And I picked it again. I like it. So it's obviously too big now. So I'm going to select it over here in the layers. And I'm going to drag this a little bit smaller. And I'm going to select it again because I need to move it over just a little bit. Now, they have curved this text just a tiny bit. You can see that circular uh, shape back there because this text is curved. They did that right here. If I don't want the curve, I can turn that curve off, but I like it. So that is how I change the text in this image. Also, by the way, when I'm done with this image and this tutorial, I add this recording to the website and I put the project link underneath so that members can open this and they can uh, cut the stencils and do whatever, change the sizing and things that they want to. So I do share this project. And if I make a, a cookie cutter, you'll see here, I've got some cookie cutters that um, I'll show you how to do that as well so that you can print your own cookie cutters. So for this one, I really don't need it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and hide it by collapsing the layers and clicking the eye. So I just, it's still there. I just hit it. So let's bring this one up. This is the one I made the colors that I wanted because I thought, well, for this one, we'll do black for the silk screen. And maybe I want to do a different color in 2024. And so I could make this two separate stencils or I could make it one stencil and just use like my thingamajini, which is smaller um, to put over this, you know, to swipe over this and make it a different color. I just realized you guys can't see me. Hang on just a minute. Usually when I'm talking, I'm using my hands and I, I realized that I did not add my picture here. So normally I'm down here talking while I'm showing you things. All right. So you can see here is an offset. I made an offset because I wanted to make a cookie cutter out of this, but I'm going to delete that one and I need to make a bigger offset it's because I want it to be a nice shape cookie cutter. But uh, the first thing we're going to do is size it to the size we want for our silk screen. <coughs> and then uh, we're going to, I'm just going to make one stencil. And if I want to make this 2024 a different color other than black, I will use my thingamajini and swipe over this 2024 carefully in the same stencil and it will work just fine. I could even reduce the size of this text by... Uh, coming down here, see it's green in the layers. I can select it and I can make this size. Right now it's 90. Let's try 85. I'll hit enter. It's a little bit smaller. I can even go 80. Hey, you're the designer. You can do whatever you want. That's what I always tell everybody. You're the designer. You get to do whatever you want. So right now this is uh, hmm, way too big almost six inches. That'd be a huge cookie, which I love big cookies, but most people want to go a little smaller. Now, when I say I share this project, if someone opens it and they save it to their Cricut design space and they want to make changes and make it bigger or smaller, they can do that. So I'm going to make this a uh, cookie or the stencil about three and a half. And then my cutter, I'll make about 3.75. So you can see here, that um, I've reduced it in size just by dragging in these corners. I can also come right up here and I can change it to something exact if I want to, right up here in the toolbar. So that's ready to make my silk screen stencil. If I were going to bridge it, let me pull this up here. If I were going to add bridges, um, and this is Another whole process if you're wanting to make traditional stencils, I do show how to bring in these little rectangles and add the bridges and it ends up looking like this right here. And I have created these bridges in here so that I can cut this out of that plastic material. Now, I did not add the bridges in the 2024 yet. 
So inside of the zero would fall out if I did not bridge it. And let me just show you, um, here's my little rectangle. And I'm going to duplicate that little rectangle. I'm just going to press on option and click right on it. And it creates another one. So I have to put a bridge inside of here because inside of a letter if or a number, if it's enclosed, that's called um, a counter. And we've got to bridge these so that they have the little fingers to keep them in that plastic. And if you have a stencil, I just click duplicate and it, it will send it in that upper corner. But if you uh, hold down option or I think it's alt on a PC and click right on it when you see that plus sign, it duplicates it right in place. We also are going to have to bridge this four. That four is pretty narrow, so that's not going to look all that great when I bridge it. So for a bridged stencil, I would change this 2024 font because that's really not going to leave a big, um, let's see, let me click on that. That's not a good font for, uh, the four is not going to bridge well. So let me come over here. Let me find something that's a little, maybe a little, I'm changing the font here, by the way. Oh, that's, that's better. Uh, it's kind of thin though. You got to look for the right thickness of text. That's too thick, <laughs> too thick, too thin. Uh, that might be okay. So now I'm going to uh, drag this rectangle over. All right, that's going to work well. This I need to center up in the zero. Basically what I'm showing you here is how to create bridges in text if you're making a traditional bridged stencil for the plastic type stencils. This one, like I said, is going to be a silk screen. There's no need for bridges in this one because we're adhering it to the silk screen mesh. And that process I show how to do in the club. Those, uh, it's a lengthy process to show the design tutorial and the assembly and the, the making of the stencil. So all that's covered in the club. I'm going to click and drag. Now, I don't want the word grad, so let's move it down here. You'll notice when I click and drag to make these bridges that I cannot slice. I have to be able to slice. So if you take a look over here, I have four things selected. When you're slicing, you can only have two things selected. So what we have to do is take this 2024, I'm going to hide it, then I'm going to click and drag over these rectangles. I'm going to be slicing them, but I have to weld them first. So combine at the bottom and then weld. And when I do that, now you can see, and I'll click on them, they are on one layer. I've, com I've welded them. And now I need to go back and uh, find that 2024 that I hid. It's right here. And when I click and drag now, I can slice it. And when I click slice and I drag away the trash, I'm going to delete the trash. You can see I've created these um, bridges in here. Now the twos don't need bridges. They'll be fine. And even now, if I wanted to make this a little bit bigger, my bridges are still going to cut very nicely. If you're going to make it smaller, you're going to have to bridge again because when you make it smaller, you close up your bridges. So now this one, along with this word grad, I've already bridged. This is ready to cut out of a traditional, the plastic type stencil material. And that's what I showed here. You probably didn't see that when I held it up earlier, but this is my Cricut mat and that's my food safe graphics on it. So, um, all right. So the bridging I cover extensively in the club. There's hundreds of tutorials on that also on silk screens, but Today I was going to focus more on the silk screen because so many people are curious about that. Now let's put this in a frame. I'm going to click on shapes and when I say frame I mean the square that the stencil is cut out of. So I'm going to click here on the square and the default size is two by two. This is locked so it will stay constrained or in proportion. 
you can choose uh, to cut your stencils at six by six. However, you will not be able to put four on a piece of 12 by 12 vinyl. So you would want to um, cut those with a paper trimmer if you're gonna do six by six and you're gonna waste what is on, on the side. You're gonna waste a, a six inches basically because the Cricut virtual mat will only let you put now, they've changed it, it's 5.75. And I like for my Cricut to cut out my square. I don't like to mess with cutting it with scissors or cutting the square out later. So I am going to bring this over and you can see, whoops, what's going on there? Well, this is on a bottom layer. See, it's down here. And this is here on the top. So to bring this to the top of this, all I have to do is click Arrange and Bring to Front, and I can put it right here. Now, you probably can't see that very well. Let me, um, I have it grouped together, which is fine, but uh, let me zoom in so you can see. I, I'm not going to change the color because when I attach it, it's all going to turn the same color anyway. So, oh, let me just change the color of my square. Let's make this um, a gray. All right, so there's the stencil. And let's see, what size is this? Three and a half by 2.34. I'll click and drag and align, and I want to center everything up. Now, for me to cut this, I need to attach it so that it stays together on the virtual work mat when I go to cut it. So I am going to click down here at the bottom, attach, and everything turns the same color as whatever color you have the most of in your, in your design, that's what it turns to. So it turned to gray because I have this big stencil frame gray in the back. So this is ready to cut out as a silk screen. Now I will Click right here on this 150 to go back to 100%. So there's my stencil. And I'm going to click save in case something crashes. I suggest clicking save often, even though sometimes I forget. Now you're probably thinking, wait, she didn't show how to make the cookie cutter outline. Well, I'll, I'll do that now. I usually do that afterward. Um, you can see right here in my layers it's attached. But I want, I want this um, grouped image to make a cookie cutter outline. And since I've already attached it, I'm just gonna select the text and the, the, the grad wording, and I'm going to click plus to duplicate it. And you see, I still have my stencil intact. I just chose this part to duplicate it. Now I can make my cookie cutter offset from this. So offset, 0.25 is pretty big around there. And you may like that, but I tend to go 0.15 sometimes. So up here under offset, I'll see distance and I'll put in 1.5, but I don't click apply. I just hit return and it will show me the outline for my cutter. You can always put this on a plaque, of course, but if you want a custom cutter, you have a 3D printer, then you can whip this out on your printer in no time. So I like 0.15. I'm going to click apply. And if you'll notice, it's got a lot of holes in it. Well, if I'm putting that into cookie CAD, that's not gonna work. Everything is touching on the outer edge. So with this selected, I can come down here and click contour, hide all contours, and now it has a solid fill. If you don't like this, in your cookie cutter for dough to get stuck. That's a really easy fix also. I'm just gonna bring this back. And you may not mind this area. Some people don't like for it to get stuck, dough to get stuck in their cookie cutter. So all I'm gonna do, I'll scoot this off now. I'll come over here to images, or sorry, shapes, not images. And I'm gonna choose, uh, I don't know, I might just choose an oval. I'm gonna bring it in here and I will, I patch images all the time. I'm basically just patching this up. Oh, what? I don't wanna do that. I was dragging the size of it. I'll just patch this thing up. I'm gonna turn that oval black and put this back on top. 
and see how that looks. That looks fine. See, my oval's still there. I just changed it to black so I can see what it looked like. There it is. Uh, I'm going to click and drag over all of this, and I'm going to go to combine, and I'm going to weld it together. And now I've taken care of that little, whoops, whenever I welded it, it moved this to see the top layer. However, I want this one on the top layer. Now, before I told you, you could go to arrange and bring to front, which you can, or you can come right over here and drag this up and it will take this to the top. And you can see now my stencil is going to fit that cutter perfectly. And if you say it's a, you want to make flowers for this cutter to add, if you have royal icing transfers, you can even add another little circle or oval up here if you were going to add flowers here or down here. When you're the designer, you can do whatever you want. So my stencil image is the same as this one. I've now got my cookie cutter outline, and I don't need this anymore, so I'm just going to delete it. And here's my cutter outline. So. That's your silk screen. This is your cutter outline. All I did for this one, I just love this diploma. I thought that was really pretty and I love the bow. And maybe for a girl you like this bow, but maybe for a guy you like this simple bow. And this was also a design I chose. And basically for a cookie cutter for these, you do the same thing. You just select it, click offset. The default is 0.25. That was a little bit big for me. I kind of like uh, 0.15 and I'll hit enter. That's a little smaller. I like that one. I'll click apply. And again, you're going to see that white area inside of here, which won't work for cookie CAD. So I'll click contour, hide all contours, and that fills with gray. And that's how I made the cookie cutter outline for that diploma. I'll delete this one. Same thing with this diploma. And then, so just some other options. I won't go into all of this in detail because it'll take more time, but if you want to make a cookie cutter from a gown, you can do the same thing here. Maybe you have someone who is getting some honors or has some honors and you need these. You know, this, if you want to make this into a cookie cutter. Now, Fusion 360, if you're going to... Um, bring an image into Fusion 360, they can be filled with color. And even with Cookie CAD, they can be filled with color. I like for my designs to have high contrast in Cookie CAD. So I always bring a black image into Cookie CAD for my cutter, but not for Fusion 360. So to bring this image for my cutter into Cookie CAD, all I do is zoom in because I want a good quality screenshot here. And on my Mac, it's Shift-Command-4 on a PC. It's your snippet tool. And I'll just take a screenshot. And when I do that, it saves that screenshot to my desktop. I simply upload that into CookieCAD and generate my cutter. So since I would do the same process for these, I think I'm going to show you guys CookieCAD and, and how I use CookieCAD to make a cookie cutter quickly. But before I do that, I'll show you one more thing. Now, in a tutorial each week when I do these, I will break things down uh, because sometimes it's a lot for a new person to take in, but just let me give you an idea of what more can be done here. So I took the cap from this design and I wanted to make a background stencil with graduation caps. So I took that same cap out of the design and I'm going to zoom in because I made it pretty small. I'm going to use this to make a background stencil. Now you can see there's a little bitty bridge in here. Let me zoom in closer. In this one I made a little bitty, a little bitty bridge because I don't want this to flip up. I don't think that it would in a background stencil. But I wanted that tassel to be detached so that I would have something, uh, some stencil material in here so that like this, if you pretend, and I always tell people, pretend like the white is all stencil material. 
This may flip up, but you're only going to be airbrushing this, so it might be fine. But if you're ever worried you're the designer, you can add a little bridge in there. So either one of these designs with the bridge or without will work for a background stencil. And so when I'm done with the tutorial, if I talk about something and I don't have time, when I get done, I will make this background stencil and everything that I've discussed will be in this project for Cricut users. And I do the same thing for Silhouette and Cameo users too. So when I'm done, I will come back in here and make a background stencil to share. You'll also have a silk screen stencil, you'll have a bridged stencil, you'll have a cookie cutter outline, and um, all these things will be available to you after the tutorial. So, um, all right, another thing I wanted to do with this graduation cap, which is the same one from here, I wanted a graduation cap cookie cutter to match. So I just simply took this cap out of the design um, for example, um, if I highlight, let's see, let me go back to the design here. You can highlight portions of a design. So do you see how in this stencil, this grad 2024 design I have highlighted, I'll duplicate another one. And now I've got this entire design, but I only want the graduation cap. Well, the contour tool is your best friend. However, you can see right now, I can't contour. Well, what's going on? Well, if I click this toggle, it has the word grad, the cap, and it has the, the dot here and the little swash. So I don't want the dot. I'm just going to hold down shift. I don't want the line, and I don't want the word grad. So I've selected everything but the hat, and I'm just going to click delete, and I'm only left with the graduation cap, not hat. And I wanted this to be about two and a half inches, so I drag it to the size that I wanted it. You can also perfect it by going here in the settings and putting in two and a half. Then I came over here to the offset tool, and it's on 0.15 this time, which is good, except for I've got this gap right here. I can close that up by bringing in another oval, or I can try to go a little bit bigger here, like 0.2, two tenths of an inch, and hit return, but not apply. It almost is closed up, but not quite. So let's do uh, 0.21, enter, there. Now we're closed up. That um, outline is nice and rounded. I'm happy with that, so I'll click apply. And you can see I've got this little gap in here. Well, Cookie Cad won't like that, so I'll click contour, hide all contours, and now I have an, a, a black image for the cap. I'll zoom in, and I will take another screenshot, shift command four, and I can make a graduation cap cookie cutter from that image. And like I said, I don't, I only suggest doing this if you have the Cricut Access subscription, because they do have, um, trademark and copyright on all of their images and if you're purchasing the subscription these are yours to make your cookie cut cookie stencils you can make your cookie cutters from them and it, it's you're perfectly okay doing that and selling your cookies all right I'm gonna click save because I haven't in a little while and I will be sharing this project but let's go to cookie cad I've got it open here and let me see if I'm logged in. I am logged in, I believe, from yesterday. Um, I'll go to my library. I do have a library because I pay for my subscription. And these cutters, I have a lot of cutters in here that you're saying these are all from Cookieathon. Um, I want to bring in that design from my desktop. So I'm going to come down here and click Add. And I can click here or I can drag files. I'm gonna click and I wanna to go to my desktop. Here is the plaque that says grad. Here is the graduation cap. So I can bring both of these in at the same time and add them to CookieCAD by holding shift. And I'll click open and accept so that it will bring them into my library. And here they are coming in 
at some point. They're not here yet. That's weird. Okay, let's do this. Let's click open in designer and see what happens. Well, it, even though it wasn't there, it still brought it in, which is the case sometimes. There's my cutter. Cookie Cat automatically mirrors it. There you go. Um, I have a trackpad, so I'm using my two fingers to roll in and out. If you have a, a wheel on your mouse, that will work for you. Now, remember to fit the stencil. Um, let me go back to design space because I always have to double check. This image in here, I'll click on it, <coughs> is three and a half. My cookie cutter is 3.8 by 2.64. All I need to know is the longest length. I'll go back to cookie CAD and I'm going to choose inches here and 3.8 is the longest side and you can see it's 2.63. Well, in Cricut Design Space, it was 2.64. It, it's always almost exact, always almost. Does that make sense? It's, it's, it's nearly exact every time. So now I have a, now this is the default right here for Cookie Cad. Oh wait, are you not seeing Cookie Cad? You're not seeing Cookie Cad. <laughs> are you? Oh yeah, you are. There's a delay. I hope. Um, hang on. Let me see if you were not seeing that. I don't know. Hmm. I think you were seeing it. I can't tell. It my I have a delay on my end, but you're seeing it now. Um, so I put in 3.8. I'm making a cutter. I selected inches. It's the longest side, so it's 2.63 here. And I like for my cutters to be a certain height according to the the dough size that I roll. But the default is right here in Cookie Cad. I have a cutter setting because I, I buy the membership each year and it's cutters 1.0 and this is what I like for my size to be. Sometimes I'll take the handle down to four and it really doesn't make a difference. It The smaller your handle, the uh, less print time. So if you're, or the smaller your height of your cutter, less print time. But I have bamboo P1Ps and they are super fast, so I don't worry about that. And, but I'm okay with my handle being a width of four. But if I click on my cutters, my modify, then here you can see it's always on five. There's a beta version right now that they have brought in that you can actually chamfer the cutting edge and you can round the handle. But I've been having a little bit of trouble getting my chamfered, the top part chamfered means angled sharp. Uh, I've been having a little trouble getting that to print correctly. And uh, the handle, I'll just show you. But let me go ahead and download this STL. I want to do that first. But I'll show you the beta version. Um, this is Scrad24. And see it says STL file. I also always put CC in front of that for Colorful Cookie. Grad24 STL, that is a cookie cutter file. Now let me show you the beta version and we'll see what happens. Because um, I had had some trouble with the cham uh, chamfered edge. Now it looks fine right here. See how that's chamfered around there? Now if you'll notice, um, let me go to the handle down here. It says rectangular. You can choose round. And it will round your handle, which some people love a rounded handle. But this uh, ch chamfered edge, it, see how it's at an angle and it makes it a little sharper? Um, I, I've been having trouble at 17. Oh, not 209. Let's try 20. And I'll bring that into my slicer. I'll save this STL file too and bring it into my slicer and see if that helps. Um, because I had asked Nathan about some issues I was having. So I am going to download the STL file. You can choose OBJ, but I usually use STL. And I'll do grad 24. I'm going to do CH for chamfer and I'll save that. And there's my cutter. 
It's modeled for me. Now remember, this is the beta version. I've already downloaded the regular version. So I'll bring in both of those to Bamboo. I wanna make sure you can see Bamboo before I take off talking again. Now, this project is uh, one I'm already working on. And so I can open a brand new Bamboo window or I can add another, you can see, look at all the plates I have in here for my cookie cutters. This is from cookie of thon so I was keeping everything together. So I'm gonna go up here to file and new, new window. And when I do that, it's gonna open a brand new bamboo window. And I'll click on new project. I don't know what, I thought I had my computer and do not disturb, but I'm getting messages. That's weird. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so here's my new window. And I'm going to bring my cutters, both of them in here to show you what they look like. Now, like I said, I'm using P1P. So this is the slicer called Bamboo Studio. I am going to come up here to this plus sign and I am going to go to my desktop. And this is the first one that we did. You can see it right here. Um, I think, let me see. I wanna make sure you can see it might my entire window, but like I said, there's a lag, so give me just a second. Yep, I think you can see that. I'm gonna put this cutter on the bed, and I'll click out of here because this one is selected. I'm going to click this little box with the plus again, and I'm gonna grab the one that says CH, the one that was chamfered. Now, I'm hoping this works this time. I've had a little trouble, and Nathan said to make my uh, wall higher. And I did that, so let's see what happens. There's the first one. You can see the handle is more squared. I did create the cutting edge, but it's not chamfered. See how this is chamfered? You can see how it's sharper at, a, at an angle, and this one is rounded. This is the beta version. This is the regular version. And I like both. They're both very sturdy, good cookie cutters. Now, what's going to happen here um, is, well, you know what? before I show you what it looks like when I slice it, let me show you how to put text on this wall. I can do this right from within my software. I'm going to click on the cutter. I'm going to click the T for text. <coughs> I'm going to come up here and I'm going to choose Arial or type in Arial because I want Arial. I want it bold. I don't want it to be 16. I want it to be five tall. The thickness, 0.5. The embed depth, 0.2, and my input text is grad. Uh, let's see. Uh, it, I don't want to put 24 because you could change the, the date to 25, 26, whatever. So grad, um, and then I'm going to put how many inches it was, and now I can't remember. So I'll go back to Cookie Cat, 3.8 inches. And you know what? You could have made this thing four inches. You're the designer. You can do whatever you want to do. Oops, wrong one. Hold on. This one. Yeah. Um, so let's put grad uh, 3.8 inches. You could put four inches. It's close enough. But I'll put 3.8 I in just so I can remember. And when I hover, see that magic right there? Uh, let me zoom in. Mm -hmm. Let me come over here. Ah! <laughs> that didn't help, did it? Now, where'd my... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, I don't want to make you dizzy. See, when I hover, <laughs> the text just kind of hangs there, but out here, the text goes away. It knows I'm putting it on this cutter because I selected the cutter. I want it to be about right here. And I'm going to click. And when I click, it puts it in place and it brings that other cutter back. That other cutter disappeared because I was adding this text. Now, take a look. 0.5 is just barely sticking out off the cutter, which is what I like. You can do 0 0.6, 0 0.4, but I usually do 0 0.5. And this is the cutter that will match that graduation stencil. And like I said, you could put four inches there. Maybe you change your mind and you want to make that four inches. Well, that is an easy fix. Click the cutter. 
go to objects. We were on global, now we're on objects. Here is the text shape. You right click, edit text, and then you come right up here. And since it's close enough to four inches, let's put four I in and click. Maybe I want to scoot this over a little, click out here, and there you go, you've edited that. Now I could would go through the same process to put the text on this one, but I want to see if it's going to work before I take the time to add the text. So I'm going to slice my plate. <coughs> and let me pull this around. So here's this one that was not in the beta version. Is it's perfect, okay? This white area, if you look over here, it will say gap infill or seam. This is a seam. Right here is a seam. Uh, here you can see this red. If you look, it will say top surface. So this is a color coded for your line type. Now here's the thing I was talking about with the um, beta version. I'm having some issues. See these gaps in this chamfered edge? I need to play with it and figure out the settings. Probably um, make this chamfered edge um, wider or something. I don't know yet. I haven't played with it enough to be able to fix that. So that one didn't quite work and I was just playing around. Like I said, I've had some trouble. I need to figure out the settings. That's something that I work to do and then I share it with club members. So I don't want this one. I'll just press delete. I'm going to put this one in the center, about in the center of my bed. Now I could do, I could print four or five of these if I wanted to on my bed. I'm going to click slice plate again. Then I'm going to click print plate. And I have all of my printers on right now because I'm using all of them. So I've got number six here ready to go. I'll click send. I've already leveled my bed. I don't need to do that. So you can see it's going to take 33 minutes and 20 seconds to print this cutter, and that includes heat time. And here in just a minute, uh, it's going to pop up, and I can watch the printer printing with a video. So my, my Bamboo P1Ps have a camera in them. Or I can go back to preview here, and I can even preview what's printing by dragging the slider to see how it's going to print. All right. Now, if I want to go back to that regular view um, and get the bed closed and be able to see the cutter, I can press Command Zero and it will put it back in view for me. Um, I do need to save this, so File, and I'm going to save this project. Uh, okay. Or I can save Project As, or I can export it as an STL. A 3MF. You've got lots of options here in Bamboo Studio, but um, file, save. You can see I've already saved it, so I don't need it. It was already named, so it named it for me. And that's all there is to printing that cookie cutter. So let me go back here and go back to me. So that entails Thursday afternoon live, the design time spent with me. I usually do a stencil and sometimes a cutter, depending on the time. I will sometimes do printables or Canva or Fusion 360. Uh, whatever, I try to alternate uh, software every week and do something different and a different design. So those are my processes and that is how I teach. Now, I try to slow down a little bit. I'm, I'm trying to get in a lot today because I'm, I'm live on YouTube as well. And the club is open for enrollment, but I, I do slow down my uh, tutorials. We cover a lot in an hour. Sometimes the tutorials are an hour and 15 minutes. It depends on how many questions we have. But what I'll do now with this video is upload it to the website and we'll put it under the design space tutorials. And I will uh, add the project link in the description. I will share that so that people can open it and they can then change the sizing or make whatever they want from it. 
but when I'm done with my video, I'm going to go back and make that um, graduation cap background stencil. I will put together the grad stencil with the bridging so that you can cut a silk screen if you like, or a bridged stencil, the background stencil, and you'll have the images for cookie cutters too. So thank you for watching today. Um, I was trying, I could not see comments while I was showing the tutorial. Um, so yeah, I'm looking here to see if there were any specific questions and I don't see anything specific for me, but thank you for watching today. I hope that was helpful. And if you're interested, join the Colorful Cookie Club. Uh, it's a it's a bargain at $19.99 a month for all the downloads and just the community that we've created and having expert help. I can help you with anything that you need help with. And if it's something that you ask about that's not possible to create a stencil from, I'll, I let you know that as well. Uh, sometimes the clients will want a logo or something that's just not possible to make a stencil out of. And sometimes we have to, you know, find another way to do it, like print it on edible icing sheets or, you know, find someone who can do that for you. But for the most part, we can just about turn anything into a silk screen or a traditional stencil. So the colorfulcookie.com or the colorfulcookie.com slash club and tell all your friends about it if they would be interested in joining. And club members, I will see you next Thursday for another live. Thanks for watching today. Bye-bye.